raises the potency of perfume items. Damaging armament. Temporary state of fervor. What does all of this even mean? Perfumes are surrounded by mystery, especially for gamers. No one really cares to use them, which is largely due to the very limiting 10 bottle carrying capacity and funny crafting recipes, which require some of the rarest items in the game. But something is telling me that after this video, you might want to give them a try, no matter how much of a gamer you are. What makes me so confident? Well, for one, there's many hidden details people might not have known about, like the fact that Perfumer's Talisman, on top of increasing only the spark aromatics damage by 20%, also increases the damage of Perfumer Bolts by the same amount. But what really matters is that you will quickly realize just how much utility these items really offer. So let's take a look at them one at a time. Trust me, you need it, bro. <laughs> Ugh, what is that awful smell? <laughs> the Iron Jar Aromatic gives you tier 4 hardness, that's what she said, for 40 seconds, which makes light and medium non-boss attack spawns off of you, but also makes you slow walk and chunky roll. This effect reduces physical damage taken by 40%, but increases lightning damage taken by 60% due to being turned into steel. Did you know that it also increases all resistances by 45? Because it doesn't say that anywhere, not even on the wiki page. You rarely get knocked down, pancaked or cancelled out of attacks unless you are dealing with very big enemies or bosses and farming the required resources to craft them is also pretty easy. While this might not be the best item on its own, it does exceptionally well when combined with other tools such as the spark aromatic. Used by the perfumers themselves, this perfume made plenty of tarnished very upset, so why not table the turns and make other people feel your pain? The spark aromatic deals fire damage and can therefore be boosted quite a bit, easily chunking enemies for thousands of HP. It can reset frostbite, oil will boost its damage by 50% and it's easily the cheapest perfume to craft. Because of that, there's really no reason to not use them. Having 10 of them with you can easily be a free 15 to 20,000 extra damage and if at any point you have to deal with a fellow tarnished and you're mean enough to combine this with Iron Jar, well, let's say their blood might boil. Speaking of, coming in as the perfect middle ground for risk reward based buffs is the Blood Boil Aromatic. It offers the biggest physical damage buff in the game at 30%, increases maximum stamina by 20% and lasts a whole minute. Which is actually a long time guys as well. You do take 25% more damage though, which is why it's right in the middle between its two competitors, Flame Grant Strength and Howl of Shibiri. The major issue with Blood Boil is that it requires Ateria Leaves, which are a finite resource, but I will show you at the end just how easily you can farm them if you so choose. What it comes down to is how risky you want to be. Pick your poison. I for one know what poison I would pick, the poison spray mist. Did you know that this perfume inflicts the strongest debuff in the game, way stronger than Scarlet Rot? With only 10 arcane, the poison spray mist inflicts 26 poison per tick on an enemy. 5 times a second for 7 seconds. That's a lot of poison. At 99 arcane, it goes all the way to 36 per tick, which is almost 30% more total poison buildup and pretty much enough to poison every enemy and boss in a single use. It is easy to make, doesn't wake sleeping enemies and stacks with Scarlet Rot for illegal amounts of damage. The only downside is that it's not silent, but I think Draconic Tree Sentinel has suffered enough by now. Suffering is a good description for the Acid Spray Mist because it sadly is the worst and pretty much only useless perfume in the game. While Patches seems to love it, all it really does is lower the damage an enemy deals by 15% for a minute. It takes 4 Farming Rock to craft, which there are only about 30 or so in the entire game and they don't respawn. Sure, they drop from ants, but only about as often as my videos, which is really bad. You would be much better off using Grail's Raw, since it does the same job while also dealing damage and making the enemy take 10% more. They sadly don't stack, which makes Raw a much better option in every way. Just like the uplifting aromatic, the final and arguably best perfume in the entire game. If you have used the bubble crystal tier before, you're going to love this one. Imagine that bubble, but times 10, and usable on spirit ashes and summons. If I had to live on an abandoned island and pick just one perfume, it would be Spongebob Squarepants for women and men, but closely followed by this. No matter your stats, this bubble reduces the damage of the next hit by 90% and lasts 40 seconds, while also increasing your and your allies' physical damage by 10% for the same duration. It works on all forms of allies and can be reused to reapply the bubble as often as you would like. This will be especially useful for the DLC bosses or really any enemy with extremely high damage output. It does, however, require Arteria leaves to craft, so I think now would be a good time to go over the materials needed and how to easily farm them. I understand farming to many might seem kinda boring, but with these farming spots it is really not that bad and the payoff is huge. The Perfumer's Grotto in Altus is an absolute goldmine. You can get the four main ingredients used in almost every perfume recipe, but if you aren't quite strong enough for this one yet, you can always farm blooms and moss around the Perfumer ruins where you get the first bottle. Living Jar Shards can be farmed as early as Stormvale Castle, right before Godric, 
and the land octopus ovary is easily farmable in them grave right under this bridge. Silver tier husks are all throughout Nokron and respawn when resting, and formic rock drop about once in a blue moon from ants anywhere underground, so frick, to heck with that. What might surprise you is that the Tyria leaves are actually kinda common. Snow giants on the mountaintops drop them pretty much every other run. It's just a little late in the game, but you will find plenty of them before you even get here. Which is an excellent point. If you don't feel like farming, literally just by playing you get enough resources to craft a bunch of them, so why not give it a try next time you play. And let's face it, you can only smell better. <laughs>